Okay, so here is a post uh, DNC uh, conversation uh, with AOC. This guy, Shai Ose, I hope I said his name right, says, I caught up with AOC at the DNC to talk about the elephant in the room, Gaza. Okay, so we're going to uh, now hear this rationalization uh, from AOC for supporting the Democratic ticket. Official platform, in my opinion, right. is good on Palestine. Mm -hmm. I don't think either party right now is doing justice to Palestinians. That doesn't mean that they're the same. Mm -hmm. I think that a Donald Trump presidency would be absolutely catastrophic. I mean, he's coming out here saying right. finish the job right. of a genocide. There's a lot of people with our politics um, that are having a hard time getting there in terms of supporting Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think we help them get there in November to beat Trump? Yeah, well, I mean, I think, first of all, it's it's important to emphasize how valid it is. We're looking at over 40,000 Palestinians mm -hmm. that have died under Israeli bombardment. And uh, the current U.S. administration has been continued to provide weapons to right. Israel that have been dropping on innocent Gazans. Right. To me, when I process this, mm -hmm. I weigh through all of the people living under extreme levels of, press of oppression, especially outside of places mm -hmm. even like New York. I think about the women that are bleeding out in ER rooms mm -hmm. uh, because they live in red states. I think about trans kids mm -hmm. that are living in places uh, where their entire families are trying to figure out if they need to pack up their mm -hmm. entire lives mm -hmm. and move somewhere else. Mm -hmm. We have to hold all of those things at once. Mm -hmm. And so to me, the conclusion that I've come to is having more people suffer to put on top of the already horrific suffering mm -hmm. that's going on in Gaza is not something that I think I'm comfortable right. with. Okay, so, you know, those extreme okay. levels of oppression, like living in yeah. Gaza, Arkansas. Yeah. About no, even. No, About totally. Even, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, not being allowed to perform experimental medical treatments on your child who may very well be autistic based on the uh based on the research uh no no let's uh let's uh put them on puberty blockers that are let's sterilize trans kids um that is that is really a priority for us as a nation in terms of abortion well uh you have women uh giving birth without anesthesia who are having C-sections in Palestine without anesthesia. You have people who, after giving birth, as we saw that particularly horrific incident, uh, their children, they come home to find their children dead. Their, the mother's dead. The in-law's dead. What the fuck are you even talking about? What? Just that, that was an unbelievable statement. But you know what? It was a very frank and honest one. I don't think you could find a better distillation of the universe that shit libs live in than that formulation yeah you know hey, to be fair the it's not the just shit libs, it's everybody shame. and most people yeah sure but but this is their particular right thing abortion and trans kids which 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 listen uh you know you get every now and then people will say the conservatives are the ones who are pushing the trans thing no they're not that that that's mutual that's mutual. There are, there are a lot of people out there who have a vested interest in ginning up this fringe issue in order to obscure a meaningful agenda. And you could not see a more raw form of that than her bringing up this, yes, by the numbers, extremely fringe issue to justify voting for a genocidal party. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And this speaks to what we were talking about a little bit in the last episode, because, you know, this kind of rationalization, well, yeah, they're both terrible on Israel, but hey, I like the Democrats on issue Y. I like the Democrats on issue Z. So yep. if it's a wash on issue A, assuming Gaza is issue A, which it isn't for most Americans, but a lot of people in this space place that up towards the top. Hey, assuming that they're both bad on issue A, I'm going to vote for a Democrat or a Republican uh, based on issue X, Y, or Z. And so a lot of our audience, I would wager that a large percentage of our audience, uh, you know, are, are very angered when they see a clip 
like that when they see AOC rationalize a vote for Kamala Harris based on abortion rights, right, or based on the trans issue. Right. Um, you know, I, I imagine most of you, uh, that really makes your blood boil. Mm -hmm. Well, on the flip side of this, because we saw, you know, not many people actually, not even, not even close to half, but you know, a decent number of people in the comment section on the last live stream and on the RFK take, which we put out as a clip, uh, this morning say, you know, Hey, I, I have acknowledge they're both horrible on Israel, but I do believe we need healthier school lunches. I do believe we need to reform the FDA. And, you know, like I said, whatever you think about uh, the actual like likelihood of that happening under Trump with RFK in his ear, question for a different time. We already kind of got into that last time. But if you are going to rationalize a vote for Trump based on what the possibility of healthier school lunches uh, you're really just the flip side of what ALC is doing here. Like you are sure. not different of in kind, of course, from these liberals. You just disagree with them. Which, hey, look, to be fair, most people think like that. Most people do not think the way we right. do. Most people right. are duopoly voters. Every four years, they say, okay, option A, option B. I'm not crazy about either one. Maybe I even dislike both candidates, as is was the case with you know Biden and Trump. Hillary versus Trump, both with favorability ratings well under 50. Hey, we don't like either, but candidate B is significantly worse on issues I care about than candidate A, and so I'm voting for candidate A. Like, if that's your rationalization, that can be your rationalization. That just makes you a normal person. Like, it's not particularly out of bounds to think that way. Most voters do. Um, I don't. I think I could speak for Russell when, uh, I, you know, Russell no longer does. And so I don't make that accommodation for either side. I think that, to me, is what solidarity is. You're saying this is the priority, and we are holding the line. We're not crossing the picket line, basically, and voting for a candidate who's, yeah, better on abortion or better on, you know, school lunches, right? Um, you know, better on fluoride in the water. Like, you know, to me... For me, and this is this is subjective. Fluoride as I is fully purifying admit. our natural yeah, right. bodily fluids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is subjective, as I fully admit. I fully admitted that last time, and fully admitted it this time. Um, for me, you know, I I just I have to hold the line on that issue, and that means supporting no one. And so I think it's important to make the point when you see something like that and you get really angry. I think it's important to hold yourself to the same standard, no matter which side of this you may fall on. That doesn't mean you don't have a lesser evil option in your head in a hypothetical gun to my head situation. I had to pick one. But what AOC is doing here is a flip side of a lot of what, you know, people in the comments are doing. A lot of people on X, what do you have? Eric Weinstein say, well, now I might vote for Trump because I think my values are going to be represented. Right. in the white house because right. rfk has his ear now the weinsteins right. are full-blown zionists so this issue doesn't some, bother some, them as much pe but some it's that people approach. have told me brett has kind of stayed out of that conversation okay because i because i brought him up i don't know i but All i've right. been told i've been told it's really eric who's pushing the zionism one of them did i say brett then mean eric i don't know i forget which one, well, you, uh, one said, of the you, said, you said both of them and some people oh, have right. told me uh it's not really him but what well, I apologize you, if I got the wrong Weinstein. At least I didn't I, call I, either of them Harvey. That would have been I, bad. I, I that would have been very bad. I had enough people give me pushback on that that I'm inclined to believe he's just kind of tried not to get into it. All right. Um, but I, I don't know that for sure. I, I never actually did the research. Um, what you really see there also is the way that the Democratic Party has been so transformed into the Bush era Republican Party, that when she justifies voting Democrat in the face of genocide, she does not talk about economics. She talks right. only about culture. I saw I saw a liberal meme that was going around saying, um, you know what, your America that you're nostalgic for. That was in America that discriminated against black people. That was in America, all, all identitarian things. And OK, fair enough, although I would argue, given that the incarceration rate of black people has gone up 1600 uh, percent since the passage of Biden's crime bill, uh, it's, it's not such a cut and dry thing that things are so much better now for that community than they were in the past. 
Um, in some ways, yes, and in other ways, no. Um, but that aside, it is the result of people being conditioned to only think in those terms that you would never see a, a Democrat say, I don't want to go back to the days of child labor. I don't want right. to go back to pre-union. That That's not the past they think about. They, they don't think about gains for the working class. They only think in identitarian terms. That is how they have been trained and conditioned, because that is the only level on which politics is discussed in the media whose job it is to propagandize them. Please clap. <laughs>